Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for coming back. I am happy to introduce myself as Nurse Adrian BSNRN. Um, so yeah, so in case you guys haven't known, I finished Capstone, I finished everything. Um, I went and I sat for my NCLEX and I passed my NCLEX and now I'm an RN. So. It's just been a crazy ride. It's a crazy journey. Um, it still, it still hasn't hit me. I feel I don't know. It's just weird. Um, words cannot describe how, like, how happy I am, and I just feel very accomplished. Um, so yeah, today's video I'm going to be talking about capstone, and so this might be a lengthy video because there's a lot to cover. Um, but before I get into that, I just want to give an update. So yeah, I haven't made a video because there's been a lot of things going on in my life. Even after graduating and taking my NCLEX, um, I really have been taking the time to relax, which feels weird. Um, like, it feels weird to like not have classes or assignments or things to do is I'm like what do I do with my free time <laughs> I have no idea what to do with my free time so but it's a good feeling I mean but it's just like dang like like I have nothing to do I have I don't have any hobbies or anything like so I've just been chilling um, spending time with my family um, and a lot of things have been going on um, September is a very busy month like in general like um, I had my birthday, and then I had my graduation ceremony. I took my NCLEX earlier this month, so it's just been it's just been crazy. So, so yeah. So um, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about capstone specifically. Okay. So when it comes to capstone, um, basically capstone, people ask like, what exactly is capstone about? Like, I will definitely say capstone. You're basically reviewing. Um, you're reviewing, you're spending a lot of time reviewing information. Um, the lectures that we have um, for Capstone, they really just go over information that you already know and just kind of refreshing everything. Um, some information that I learned was actually really helpful. Like I know there was one lecture that we had where our professor went over like testing strategies and they were actually really helpful. So things like that and each week you go over different things different topics um, you do have quizzes which they're just general quizzes like um, they're not necessarily anything specific that you go over but you have quizzes um, you do have an RUA assignment which is a paper to do in the class um, and then you have your regular like EDAPs um, you also have some pass point assignments to do or like quizzes on pass point as well um, but yeah, like we have, like, for example, we have, we had our Passpoint comprehensive exam on campus. So that's usually done in the first week. And I'm going to be honest, when I took my Passpoint that first week in Capstone, I failed it. Like I did not do good. I took the exam on campus with everyone. And I don't know what it was. I really think I was just anxious. I was nervous. Um, I wasn't in my head. And um, I took the Passpoint exam. It was like a, yeah, it's a comprehensive baseline exam that you have to take. And I, at the very end, I got like, I got like a level six and I failed. So I was like, man, I was like so, I was so distraught and I was so like, disappointed but at the end it's not it's not a huge deal <laughs> and I didn't know that at the time but at the time I thought it was the end of the world um, but it's really not and then I remember I think I did the there was an ATI comprehensive exam it's like a practice a exam I think I got like I got like 70 on it um, which I was also not happy about like a 70 is not that bad but still I was not I was not happy with that so in my first 
in my first week of capstone like already i was i was feeling everything i was stressed i was anxious um i actually had a panic attack um which i might make a separate video about and kind of talk about those feelings that i had but but yeah it was just the first week of capstone it was just very very overwhelming um and then the biggest thing about capstone is that you have vaties so vaties v-a-t-i's so these are your virtual ati assignments so every week you have vaty assignments to do and you have a proctored exam that you have to take over a topic you have quizzes to do and then you have your same ATI educator that you had in collaborative you have the same one and then that ATI educator you tell them you know what you did or, or how you did on your exam or that you you know you basically tell them that you did your exam um, for the week and then your ATI educator will give you your remediation assignment. So then she'll give you an assignment and then you do it on a Word document, you copy that, you paste it into the VADI um, and you submit it and then you're good to go on to the next week and the next topic. Um, I will say this about VADIs. I knew there were quite a few people that had gotten started already and they were already ahead um, during preview week. So you know how like in Chamberlain you have um, a preview week like one week before the session starts. So there were some classmates they had already gone into VADIs and they already started doing and working on their VADIs. So the thing with VADIs is you can work ahead um, with VADIs with your educator. So I would highly recommend like if you want to, you can definitely work ahead with VADI so that you're not so overwhelmed and you don't have so many things to do. Um, but I will say with VADIs, I will say definitely take them seriously. Like, you want to definitely take them very, very seriously. Like, when it comes to VADIs, you're remediating and you're reviewing your weak points. And that's really important because later on in the session, you have to take the exit exam. Um, and then eventually you have to take the NCLEX, which is the biggest thing, right? So you want to make sure that you identify and you, you know, work on and remediate what your weaknesses are um, within each topic, each week, each category. Um, so yeah, so if you can work ahead with baddies, I would recommend that you do that. Uh, me, I didn't work ahead. Um, I did work ahead eventually, like towards the end of the session, but I didn't want to overwhelm myself. So I just did my baddies every week as they were due. So, so yeah, and the thing about baddies as well, I will also say this, um, you have to get your baddies done in order to sit for the exit. There were some people that Previously, they did not get to sit for their exit because they didn't do all of their baddies in time. So they literally, even though they were passing the class, because they didn't complete all of their baddie work and assignments, they did not get to sit for their for their exit. So doing your baddies is super important. And it's very important that you do them every week, get everything done on time, and so that you can sit for the exit and you can you can graduate right so that's what you want so so yeah so the baddies are super important so right away you have baddie assignments from week one um and all the way throughout the session so and so yeah if you can get if you can get ahead um definitely go for it and that's pretty much it um besides that like i said you have lectures um you have your usual assignments and I would also say with VADIs, like, definitely try to make sure that you get your VADIs done early in the week. So, like, Monday, Tuesday, whatever, like, make sure you sit down and you do your VADIs. So that way you can give your educator enough time to give you the remediation and then you can knock out the remediation. Um, so, yeah, don't... That is not something you want to procrastinate on. I will definitely say that. Um, during week three of Capstone, we had 
Um, we had two NCLEX review days. Um, these were like eight hour days, right? What are they, eight hours? So yeah, so in week three, we actually have visitors from Nurse Think. They get, I actually have this like little notepad that they got, hello, Nurse Think or whatever. Cool. I actually have the little notepads. So there were these two nurses, these two ladies, they were educators and they came and we had two NCLEX review days that were like eight hours long on campus. It was all of us together. Um, and they basically lectured all eight hours over different testing strategies and different topics. Um, you know, some people found it helpful. You know, me, I thought it was kind of helpful. There were definitely things that I did learn during those sessions. Um, but yeah, I usually, but yeah, those two sessions, they were very, very long. But um there were things that we learned there um and it's just everybody's experience is different me i i i feel neutral i was like it is what it is we're all here <laughs> we have to be here and that's the thing with the NCLEX review days you have to attend in order to get credit um for the NCLEX review um assignment which is basically this big assignment that's worth like i think like 200 points but I will get into that in this video. Basically, like, by doing your pass point assignments, attending those two NCLEX review days, um, doing all of your other work, you easily get 200 points. And that is given to you by the professor because the professor is checking off that you're doing everything that you're supposed to do. You know, you're doing your baddies, you're doing your pass point assignments, you're doing uh, whatever uh, assignments that you're given. And so then at the end, you get those easy 200 points. Um, so you have to attend those two NCLEX review days. Um, and of course, do your baddies and everything else you're supposed to do. Um, but yeah, that happens in week three for us. And so we all had to join in and do that. And then that's pretty much it. Like every week, you have your baddies, you have all of your assignments, um, pass points, all of assignments, all of that. So by week six, um, you should be done with all of your baddie assignments, all of the different categories and different topics, right? Um, so I did um, all of my baddie assignments. I think I worked ahead towards the end. Um, and so by week six, you should have all of your baddies for all of the different weeks, all of the different topics done. The last one is leadership and management. So once you do the exam and then you do your remediation and you submit your re remediation, um, then your educator will verify and will um, give you the green light to do your practice B um, assessment, um, which I think is proctored. And then you can do your predictor as well after that. I don't remember if we had remediation. I don't think we had remediation for the practice B um, assessment or the predictor. I think the only thing that you had to do was to make sure that you did your predictor and then that was it. I think there was a lot of confusion in my session and my cohort whether or not we had to do like remediation for the predictor. I think some of the educators from ATI, I think there was like a lot of misunderstandings from their side because the requirements for the class is that you have to do your predictor and then that is it. You are done with all the baddies and done with everything. You do all of your, all of every week, you do every topic, every baddie. Towards the end, you do your practice B and then your predictor and then you're done. Um, and I think on my predictor, I don't remember what score I got because it is a it is a practice assessment. It's a proctored assessment. Um, I don't remember what my score was, but I was feeling pretty confident. Um, but by that point, um, when I finished and did my practice B, um, you know, we were in week seven, um, and so we were preparing, obviously preparing for our exit exam. Um, we did our pass point comprehensive in week seven on Monday. Um, so we did that and I will tell you like as I mentioned in the in this video earlier like in week one I got like I failed 
the pass point exam, like the first one. I got a level six and um, I failed and whatever. When I took my pass point exam in week seven, I got a level eight, which is like the highest level that you can get. And I passed, obviously. So um, I was super happy about that. I was like, I think all of the work that I had been putting in to you know the baddies and and just in general with pass point and learning testing strategies it's been it was really working out so and i think on the practice b and the predictor i think i did pretty good on those as well so i was feeling very very confident so definitely like i said take your baddies seriously and take all of the studying that you do seriously in capstone um, because in the end like when i got to week seven <clears throat> you know i passed my pass point comprehensive um, I did pretty well on the practice B and the predictor, so it pays off. Like, all of the studying and the preparing and everything that you do, it really does pay off. So yeah, and then the following week, week 8 on Monday, um, is when we had our exit exam. So we took that on Monday. Um, I passed mine, which is great. Um, I had spent all of the last week um, studying for that and pretty much like you pretty much spend the whole session like studying for the exit that's pretty much what you're doing um i think now i believe on campus um from what i've heard they're changing the like exit exam from ati to i think nurse think i believe which is like those two days that we had so I don't know how they're going to change that. I don't know what it's going to be like anymore. So probably this video, I don't even know if this video is going to be relevant <laughs> um, because they change things so fast. But, um, but all in all, I will say for the exit exam, I did a lot of practice. I did a lot of practice questions with ATI. Um, because the exit exam is administered by ATI, the one thing that is super helpful is ATI. Like, I would not recommend using anything else, like Passpoint or Archer or any other resource. Like, stick to ATI, right? Stick to whatever resource is what the exam is going to be of, right? So if the exam is ATI, use ATI. Do ATI practice questions. Um, do your baddies. You know, study all the questions that you get from your VADIs, from your remediation, um, your focused review on your VADIs, um, and then figure out what are your weaknesses. So for me, for example, um, one of my weakest points, um, I think, was maternal. So I had to make sure I did a lot of extra studying and extra practice questions for maternal. I know med surge was one that was low for me so i had to do extra remediation and extra work on med surge just to make sure that i was good um with med surge but yeah all of it all of it's very it can be very overwhelming um this session was very busy um like i said when i first started this first session or you know in capstone the first week i mean i was freaking out i was having a panic attack i was you know I was just freaking out. I had so much anxiety. Um, but in the end, I was able to just work through everything, organize myself, make sure I did everything on time, worked ahead if I was able to work ahead, and and I did it. So <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. And so many of my classmates, we were all successful. And I have lots of classmates like you know they work they have children they have all kinds of stuff going on and we were all successful so yeah if we can all do it you guys can do it as well so i want to give you guys that encouragement this this session can be very stressful um this is probably one of the most difficult classes i've ever taken not because the class is hard or challenging but because there's a lot to do we had an rua assignment which is like ridiculous like I don't know why we had to do an RUA assignment. Um, it's basically like this research paper that you have to do. Um, it's not a big deal. But we were all like, why do we have an RUA? Like we literally have so many things to do and we have a freaking RUA to do. Um, and the same thing I will also say for clinicals as well. Like we had clinicals this session. We only had four clinicals, which is fine. 
Um, but we were like, why do we have clinicals? Like, we literally have, our time is so limited and we have to go to clinicals, but whatever. So now I'm gonna talk about clinicals. Um, clinicals for this session, um, clinicals are in med surge. So you go to the hospital and you have, you know, med surge clinicals. I don't know why, I wish we had, I wish we had more specialized clinicals, like, you know, we could have gone to the ICU or something like that, or the ER, um, but whatever. We had, so clinicals for capstone, you have um, four clinicals, they're in med surge. Um, our instructor was really, really great. Um, she was amazing. And when it comes to clinicals, like you're expected to do like everything or whatever your nurse allows you to do. You have to make sure like you assess your patient and you give report to um, your nursing instructor and you have to make sure that you give like a good SBAR report. Um, so that's the thing like our instructor really wanted us to practice is giving report because when you become a nurse, you have to give report to everyone, right? You have to give report to the oncoming nurse, you have to give report to the charge nurse, you have to give report to the doctors or whoever is communicating with you. Um, so she really wanted us to learn how to do that. Um, so other than that, I mean, it was just pretty much your same regular clinical. Um, we did have um, to do a care plan. Um, and then other than that, the clinicals were just, just regular clinicals. <laughs> I really don't have much to say about that. Um, I had my clinicals really far away. So for my last clinical, I had to drive like 45 minutes. Um, to my clinical place, but that's fine. Um, and then, and then we had our we had our last clinical, which is crazy. Um, like, it was just a surreal experience. Like, man, I had my last clinical ever. Like, last time I'm gonna wear this uniform. So yeah, it was just it was just a crazy surreal experience. Um, but that's pretty much it for clinicals. You have four this session on top of everything else that you have to do. So. So yeah, overall with this session, I would say like, you wanna make sure that you manage your time. You wanna make sure that you plan everything out. If you can work ahead, work ahead, um, do whatever you need to do and make sure that you spend, you know, whatever time you need, like reviewing, practicing, remediating so that you can, you know, help yourself in the end uh, when you have to take your exit exam and so that you can pass and you can get through and you can finish your very very last session so i will say as well like um when it comes to capstone um you know you're getting ready to take the nclex so during the session like you will like register for your nclex you have to make sure that you're ready to pay it's like 200 dollars to take the nclex um i think you have to do that by week four and then after you take um your exit uh we took our exit on monday and then by friday our the president of our campus she released our names those of us that passed our exit right uh she released our names to the board of nursing um, that Friday so that way we could get our ATT which is our attestation to test okay so she released it on Friday and then we had a weekend we actually had an extended weekend because it was Labor Day weekend um, so we had a long weekend and literally the day after I took my exit like that Tuesday and all the way um, I was studying for the NCLEX and I was doing practice exams every single day. I'm gonna make a video, a separate video, talking about how I studied for NCLEX. It's gonna be more detailed, so I'm definitely gonna do that as well. So I was studying for the NCLEX. I was doing a practice exam every day, doing that. And then it, for the ATT to arrive, it takes like three to 10 business days for you to get your ATT. So me, I was like crazy. I was refreshing my email. I was checking my spam folder. And then when did I get my ATT? Okay, so I ended up getting my ATT on the 8th, which is like, I wanna say, what is that? Yeah, so I ended up getting my ATT on the 8th, which is literally like the next Friday I ended up getting it. Um, and the thing about getting your ATT, it's super important 
that as soon as you get your ATT, you have to make sure that you schedule your NCLEX like as soon as possible. Um, so the thing about Pearson, which administers the NCLEX, Pearson administers all kinds of exams. It's not just the NCLEX. They, they administer all kinds of different exams for different careers and different people. So the thing about like scheduling your NCLEX when you get your ATT is that space is limited. Like, you know, and so you have to make sure that you schedule yourself as soon as possible. And as soon as you get your ATT, you better be ready and ready to schedule. You can schedule right off of your phone. That's what I did. Um, as soon as I got the email, I went through the link and I went and I found the testing center that had the best date. So I'll give you an example for me. Um, I live in spring and I scheduled myself to take the NCLEX on the 11th, uh, September 11th. And I got um, a testing center all the way in Sugarland, which is like 45 minutes. So, um, and it was in the morning, um, but it worked out for me. So me and my classmate, like we both scheduled on the same day in the same testing center. So September 11th, I woke up early, got dressed, got ready, and I drove all the way out there um, early in the morning to take, to take my NCLEX. And I sat and I took my NCLEX and then I passed. So, so yeah, I passed in 85 questions, which is great. Um, really, really proud of myself for that. Um, and like I said, after I took my exit exam, I was studying for my NCLEX. Um, so that's something that I definitely recommend. Like, you know, don't, don't, I know a lot of people and, it, and everybody's different, right? Like after, like we took the exit, people went on vacation and people were going out of town and people were taking a break. Um, and that's fine. I mean, if you feel like you need to do that, do that. But me, like I did a practice exam every day and I studied for the NCLEX every day after the exit all the way till it, it was time for me to take uh, my NCLEX. Um, so yeah, and the other thing, like I said, and I will emphasize this, like make sure that you are ready, like keep an eye on your emails when you like are about to get your ATT. Some people, they had to drive, they had to go out of town to take their NCLEX. Some people had to go to Dallas. Some people had to go to Corpus Christi. Bryan, uh, Texas College Station. Some people had to go to Louisiana to go take their NCLEX because they scheduled themselves, I think, too late or whatever, I don't know. But yeah, you don't wanna do that. So you wanna make sure you get like the right date. And like I said, I will make a separate video about NCLEX, but my last thing I will say is when it comes to the NCLEX and when it comes to scheduling yourself for the NCLEX is that you are more ready than you think you are. So don't be afraid to schedule yourself to take the NCLEX as soon as possible. Like you are more ready than you think you are. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and I will say now at this point, like thank you so much for following me on this journey. Like it's been crazy. I. <laughs> Like, I just cannot believe that I'm here. Like, I'm finally here. It went by so fast, but at the same time, it feels long, you know, but it's insane and it's it's a crazy feeling. Um, but I just wanna say thank you guys so much for following my journey. I feel emotional now. Like, we went through this whole journey together. Um, I got to connect with so many of you guys like throughout this whole journey you guys have been sending me emails and i got lots of really really sweet messages um when i posted on my instagram that i passed and i graduated and all that so um you guys are amazing you guys are incredible thank you guys so much for following my journey my next video i'm going to be talking all about NCLEX, so stay tuned for that um, but other than that, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for commenting, asking your questions, emailing me, DMing me on Instagram. Um, thank you guys so much for liking this video and subscribing. And I will see you guys next time. Okay.
here. You know, you guys gotta come back there. We're just rehearsing. So you can leave if you have a little Oh, sorry. <laughs> Adrian Guerra, registered nurse. Yeah! I know that guy. <laughs> Brittany Renee Hashagen, registered nurse, cum laude.